The first rain in fall was very long, taking for four or five days, and the earth was soaked and cooled by the autumn rain. The days when it cools down are really good, cool, and even breathing is particularly smooth. When it's back to sunny, the sky suddenly becomes higher, as clear as the eyes of a donkey. Silly, as if full of love. In fact, nothing. Cloudless. Occasionally, a feather-like cloud or two hang in the distance, motionless. As you can imagine, there is no wind in the sky. Occasionally, there is a flock of geese. They are flying, constantly changing their flight formation, from Y to one, and from one back to Y. They are not in a hurry. They have plans early, so they can follow the steps. The land of one village is more comfortable, and the alleys are covered with straw. The autumn rains for several days have soaked the haystacks of every household, and it is finally clear that they must be dried in the sun. And the entire one village is golden. The straw emits a special smell under the illumination of fall. Some fragrant, some astringent. One village is shrouded in such a smell. Smells lazy. Of course, those chickens are happy. They bow their heads and look for some remaining rice on the straw. They don't need to fight or rob them. They each guard their own territory, taking a peck here, a peck there, and enjoying themselves. Shen Cuijin carried her rake and kept turning grass in the alley in front of her house. The sun hangs overhead, but the sun in the fall is the sun in the fall. After all, it is not so resolute. It has the meaning of trans and sloppy, and it shines on the body, especially bright. In the past, work such as turning grass was always done by Hongfen, but how can Hongfen be counted on? Not anymore. When Hongfen is married, Shen Cuijin thought. She really needs to rest for a few days. This year has been unusual, so unusual. Everything has been caught up, one after another, as if God has arranged it. What a bad year! Too worrying, too uncomfortable. The most worrying thing is Duan Fang. Since the threshing time, Shen Cuijin has been discussing his marriage. Seeing that fall has come, she has no clue. It was okay to have no clue, and there was also trouble with Sanya. <sighs> Sin. Although Duan Fang's condition is good, he and Sanya have such an event that it's really hard to say what will happen in the future. Let it down first. Don't be in a hurry. Wait for Sanya's matter to fade away slowly. And then talk about it further. At this moment, if you propose a marriage to him, even a thoughtful girl will not agree. Well, flipping the grass, Shen Cuijin thought about Duan Fang, but when she looked up, she saw Duan Fang coming out of the house with a straw mat in one hand and a net bag in the other, as if he was about to go out. Shen Cuijin held the rag, looked at the belongings in Duan Fang's hand, and confused, so stood there waiting. When Duan Fang came to the front, Shen Cuijin stopped him and asked, "What are you doing? Where are you going?" Duan Fang stood still and said in a low voice, "I'll move to the west of the river." Shen Cuijin said, "What are you going to do in the west of the river?" Duan Fang said, "I'm going to raise pigs." Shen Cuijin said, "What kind of craziness do you have?" Duan Fang ignored his mother, ignored her, and left. Shen Cuijin shouted and said, "Stop!" Duan Fang seemed to have not heard and dragged a long string of straws under his feet. Shen Cuijin looked at Duan Fang's back, anxious. She just couldn't figure out what Duan Fang was going to do. How come he wants to raise pigs, but anything else? 
Of course, raising pigs is not a shameful thing, but after all, it is not decent, mainly because there is no good faith. When matching in the future, people will ask, "What does your son do? Raise pigs? How to say it?" Shen Suizhen jotted the rake in her hand, and the old hands around her jumped up and flew out several meters. She caught up and said, "Dun Fang." But Dun Fang's body had already turned at the alley. Dun Fang came to the west of the river and got into the thatched shed of the pig farm. Just in front of Camel, there stands a wooden bed. Camel is in his fifties, with a big hunch and arched high on his back. People in the village call him Camel. Another feature of Camel is that he has freckles on his face, like being sprinkled with rapeseeds. So many people also call him rapeseeds. In fact, neither Camel nor rapeseeds are pleasant names. But Camel is interesting. He has taboos as he recognizes rapeseeds, but doesn't like people calling him Camel. Perhaps because of this, most people called him Camel resolutely instead of calling him Rapeseeds. Of course, Dun Fang was an exception because he had just arrived, and Dun Fang was polite to Camel, and respectfully called out Rapeseeds. Dun Fang set up the bed, put on the straw mat, lay down, tried the harness. Which was fine. Sat up and looked at Camel with a smile. Camel squatted on the ground, smoking the dry cigarette seriously, and he couldn't tell whether he was happy or unhappy at all. That is to say, he couldn't tell if Dun Fang was welcomed or not. Speaking of which, Camel is quite unusual. He has a family with a son and a daughter. It is not easy for a person like him to stay on a pig farm for twenty years. Of course, Camel's wife died early, at the age of forty. In fact, when the daughter got married and the son had his family, Camel always regarded the pig farm as his home and devoted himself to the pigs. Camel and his sons and daughters never visited, and lived their own lives. For many years, he lived alone. The days were pretty good too. A sun during the day, a noon at night, three meals a day, sleeping per night. Everything goes well. Fortunately, Ripsies has a good waist and a strong body. He doesn't communicate with his children, and it's nothing, just don't visit. Camel has not yet reached the point where he needs his sons and daughters to carry the shit and pee. As long as there are pigs, Camel can enjoy himself. Think about it. Camel was the pig expert of the county in the early years. Camel can get along with his children, but it doesn't mean that he can get along well with pigs. Dun Fang lived at the pig farm. In fact, Dun Fang came to raise pigs. It was not a temporary decision, but after careful consideration. The most fundamental reason is that Dun Fang did not want to stay in one village; he wanted to leave. However, where can he go? He can only go to the pig farm. Since Sanya left, Dun Fang couldn't stay in one village any longer. Dun Fang had to face many people and many questions every day. In fact, every time was torture and interrogation. People in one village have a characteristic, especially those elders. They are enthusiastic, concerned, curious, and always like to ask. Dig deep and ask. If you don't tell others about your affairs, you are being disrespectful. Others are caring about you, flattering you, and you have to answer. But Duan Fang really doesn't have so many things to answer, and some things are hard to say. What should he do? The most appropriate way is to avoid it. But Wang Village is such a small place. Where can you hide? After thinking about it, Dun Fang thought of a pig farm. The pig farm is a good place, although it is not far from the village. It is separated by a river. 
The most important thing is that there were no households around, so there are not so many mouths. Pigs have mouths, but they can only be arched to the ground, not people's hearts. This is better. There is a deeper reason why Duan Fang came to raise pigs, mainly to serve as a soldier. Duan Fang himself knows that it has been a long time since he graduated from high school, but he has not performed in the village. This is always a flaw. Coming to the pig farm at such a critical juncture, the dirty work and hard work have been done, and it will always be a bargain in the future political check. It's a bright spot anyway. Since it's not too long before the improvement, no matter how hard and dirty it is, it will be over by enduring. All in all, it's a choice that does more good than harm. The pig farm is quite small. It is called a farm, but it is actually about thirty pigs. Most of them are crossbred Yorkshire, and the rest are all Xinhuai black pigs. In comparison, Duan Fang lacks those white Yorkshire ones. Yorkshire's posture is quite high. Looking at it from the front, the front part of the chest is particularly open and aggressive, and you can see their hairy in them. In comparison, the Xinhuai black pig is much more dirty and looks very wretched. The most terrible thing was the Xinhuai pig's two big ears, which were surprisingly biggy, floppy, and shaky. Once quiet, they cover their eyes, making them look weird and snaky. Look at Yorkshire's ears then. They are small and translucent under the sun. They freeze when there's a disturbance. They twinkle like a horse, like vigorous felines. Of course, the biggest difference is not in the ears, but in the abdomen. Yorkshire's abdomen is flat and closed, a little more handsome and mighty. As for Xinhuai pigs. Their stomachs are not decent at all. Their bellies are very large and very loose. They are dirty and wrinkled, like a lot of rags. Since the back of the Xinhuai pig is sunken by a large piece, this is even worse. Their bellies dangle all the way to the ground. Once it moves, the double-lined teeth are dragged on the ground, mixed with poops and urine, and it is sloppy to death. Duan Fang likes Yorkshire. Well, Camel and Duan Fang have made a simple division of labor, and all the Yorkshires belong to Duan Fang. In less than two days, Duan Fang understood that the so-called raising pig was to feed them. Because pigs are fed by humans, their habits are somewhat similar to those of humans, and they have three meals a day as well. Don't underestimate the three meals a day. It's a big matter. Pigs are not people who hold chopsticks in one hand and bowls in the other. At most, they eat two big bowls. Pigs are not like this. They are all about eating. When it's time to eat, it's like fighting, burying its mouth in the pig's food, taking a bite and shaking its head, swallowing another bite, shaking it again, and then chewing frantically with its eyes closed. A meal is a big bucket. Three meals a day, you have to carry load by load into the pigsty. But the trouble is not the pigs eating, but the pigs pooping. Pigs poop way too presumptuous. When they want to, they poop. Where they want to, they poop. A lot of shit. If you don't clean it, well, they will sleep in their own poops and urine. They don't care, and it's cool. The most unbearable thing for Duan Fang is the dirtiness. Right after you clean it, they will lay flat, one in the east and one in the west. Duan Fang then beat them with a pole. They are like coals, jump high and jump high again. Camel was distressed when he saw it and said, "Duan Fang, don't be like this." The words were not serious. However, the meaning is all there with the emotional coloration. His love for pigs is beyond words. It's not that Duan Fang didn't want to be lazy, but he really couldn't. The pig stay of camel was right next to his. After comparing, the gap came out. Camel was dirty himself, but his pig pen was always clean. 
After cleaning, he rinses it with water again, and it can be used for a feast or a new house. Camel also has his own theory. Raising pigs is like a young wife raising a child. It doesn't count if you can feed them. Putting the nipple in the baby's mouth. Who couldn't? The key is to hold and serve. So a silly wife can feed, but a clever one can serve. Is such a truth. As a result, Duan Fang's labor load is large. He has just to carry the pig food over, and after feeding, he has to carry water and flush the pigsty. The power of an example is endless, and the power of an example is cruel. Camel kept silent and set a cruel example for Duan Fang. After three or four days, Duan Fang's shoulder was swollen. Hey, if I had known about today, why would I do it? People are not easy to serve, but pigs are easy to serve. Same. Anything with a mouth is not a good thing. Because the pigsty had to be cleaned every day, Duan Fang had to buy a smoke pot. The smell in the pigsty was so overwhelming. Lighting a cigarette makes it light for well, but Duan Fang couldn't afford paper cigarettes, so bought a cigarette pot. Duan Fang was only in his early twenties, but smoking a cigarette pot made him look old. However, it had to be so. With no shaving, the twenty-year-old Duan Fang suddenly aged ten years. When the day was over, Duan Fang and Camel lived in the hut at night. Duan Fang found that perhaps the time Camel spent with pigs was too long, so had some pig habits. For example, he likes to stay in the corner. For example, when he's fine, he always has to make some noise in his throat, humming for no reason. Especially when it comes to smoking dry cigarettes, Camel first squats down, leans his back against the corner of the wall, and then lights the fire and smokes slowly. Take a breath, um, take another breath, and then hum. Sounds like a pig. Except for humming, Camel didn't talk much. Camel doesn't like to talk. It's a bit like Mr. Gu, as he's also a boring gourd. However, Duan Fang was wrong. This time, it was a big mistake. Camel is not a boring gourd, as he likes to talk. He's a mouth and a talker, talking to death. He hadn't spoken a few days ago because he was unfamiliar with Duan Fang, and maybe he was still secretly observing Duan Fang. Now, after for a few days, he saw that Duan Fang was very honest, and the situation of Camel changed quickly. He suddenly opened the gate of his words, and it never ended. Duan Fang, listen to me. Camel had the letter on the wall and finally spoke. Camel said. This pig has a lot of matters and knowledge. Camel said, "It looks like they are all pigs, but in fact, they are not the same. Pigs are different everywhere. Jiangsu has mainly Xinhuai pig, black with a little white pattern on the butt, which is its symbol. As for Shanghai, it is Shanghai white. Beijing has Beijing black, and Shanxi becomes Shanxi black. Zhejiang is Zhejiang tan white." As for Liaoning, there are Xinjin pigs in Xinjin County. Xinjin pigs is a black pig, but the tips of its nose, tail, and lower parts of its limbs are all white, so we call it six white pigs. For the north, you arrive at Harbin. The pigs in Harbin are also white, so of course they are called Ha white pigs. Duan Fang closed his eyes, and suddenly a map of the People's Republic of China appeared in his mind, covering a vast area. This is the territory of pigs, the history and geography of pigs. But Camel was not limited to China. With the topic of pigs, he began to look at the world. Camel said, "Duan Fang, you don't know. In fact, foreigners also raise pigs." Denmark, you know, has landless white pigs. The Yorkshire in our pig pen, its old ancestor is actually in the UK. 
and later the British brought it to Australia, and later it traveled thousands of miles to China. Americans also raise pigs, the most famous of which are two breeds, Duroc and Hampshire, and Pairtrain in Belgium and Canada's Lacombe. So many. Duan Fang opened his eyes, sat up, looked at Camel in front of him, and stared at him. He doesn't know this person. Who is this person? Duan Fang thought that the pig raising old man didn't even know a word, but was actually a scholar. A Denmark and Australia. These foreign country names popping out of Camel's mouth are so scary, like dreaming. Is this man Camel? Camel leaned under the latin, rubbed it on the wall a few times, and smiled mysteriously. Camel whispered, "I studied in the county." Camel went to the county to learn to raise pigs in 1957, when the People's Commune had just been established. When the topic came to 1957, Camel said more. That is really the life of the gods. Camel said that every morning when he woke up, he got two big buns, bigger than a fist, and he could eat pork once a week. Speaking of pork, Camel licked his lips, and the topic changed again. Pig is only for food; every part of the pig can be eaten. Which one is the best, Duan Fang? You definitely don't know. Let me tell you. Behind the little sow's butt, that. Under the tail, that, you know, hey, that's it, the best. I know you haven't eaten it, but I have. Yummy, delicious. Duan Fang, even though we raise pigs every day, we don't eat pork. I haven't tasted pork for four years. Camel didn't bother too much about the taste of pork. His words changed and evolved in selling pigs. Who can sell pigs? Drive the pigs to town, weigh the pounds, collect the money, and that's it. But pigs are not sold that way. Camel said that selling pigs is very particular. The most important thing is to feed. That is, the last ten days. In the last ten days, I can let it gain four pounds of meat per day. Do you believe it? Camel said that pork is seventy-three cents per pound. Four patties of meat are three times four is twelve. Four times seven is twenty-eight. One day is two point ninety-eight, and ten days is twenty-nine point two. If I mean in ten days we're going to sell pigs, what are we going to do on the first day? Camel said, "What are we going to do on the first day?" Duan Fang did not know. He stared blankly at Camel. Camel answered his own questions, and we got to get the box out of them. Camel said, "Use a piece of treclofon, mix it with the pig's food, let the pigs eat it, and the worms will be gone. After killing the worms, let the pigs rest for a day. On the third day, we will do gastric lavage for them. Stomach lavage is actually very simple. Give it soda first." And then give it baking soda on the fifth day. The pig's stomach will be washed clean. Why do gastric lavage for pigs? It is to give the pigs a good appetite. Let them eat. As soon as the stomach is clean, the pig seems to go crazy and eat with all its might. They grow as much as they eat. Pigs are such good things because they can be turned into meat by eating anything. Now here comes the most crucial point: what to eat, what to eat. Duan Fang, let me tell you: put rice bran, wheat bran, corn flour, and grain folder together and soak them in water, all of which must be prepared in advance. Soaked well, dried well, and let them ferment. As soon as it is fermented, there is a wine aroma. When it's time to feed, add a handful of chives. Pigs love it very much, especially love to eat. You think as soon as it is fermented, there will be alcohol, and pigs will sleep as soon as they eat, actually drunk. 
Wake and eat, eat and drunk, drunk and sleep, sleep and wake, wake and eat, eat and drunk, drunk and sleep, sleep and wake, wake and eat. Drunk living and dreamed dying, grow the most meat. Ten days of work, that is forty pounds of meat. Dun Fan, to get rich, go raise pigs. If our motherland has as many pigs as people, how much meat will our motherland have? Within ten days, the country will be prosperous and strong. Dun Fang admired the camel, as champions are all across the 360 careers. True, camel is the champion of the pig. In such a vigorous era, camel quietly became the champion of pigs. If he hadn't come to the pig farm, Dun Fang would never have expected such a person in Wang village. Camel is not ordinary. Rapeseed, how do you know so much? Take pigs as people," said Camel. But Duan Fang's reverence for Camel could not last, and Duan Fang couldn't take it any more. In the days that followed, Duan Fang almost fell asleep to the voice of Camel every night. Pigs open Camel's mouth and close it. Just the pigs, always pigs, nothing else. Duan Fang thought that Camel would spend a night or two talking about the pig, and then he would say something else. Camel did not. Under the topic of pigs, Camel couldn't stop the car. Pigs are broad, profound, and never end. In short, at night, Duan Fang felt that he was not laying on the bed, but in the pigsty. He became a pig student, and Camel became a pig teacher. Pigs are no longer pigs. Pigs are coarse. Chinese politics, mathematics, physics, and chemistry, which will never be finished. It's a miracle that pigs can also get sick. They indigest. They are constipated. They have pneumonia. Pigs are also prone to prolapse of the anus. Pigs are prone to rheumatism. Pigs can also miscarry. If the confinement is not good, it will lead to postpartum madness, which is very dangerous. You see, camel is right. How are they pigs? They are humans. The story of pigs is really coming. A little sow kept by camel eventually stopped eating. This little black sow is the heart and soul of camel, and camel said that it is particularly beautiful. When the spring started this year, the veterinarian wanted to wash it with other pigs, but Camel didn't want to. The so-called washing, in a nutshell, is gelding, but the boar is called gelding, and the sow is called washing. Camel didn't wash it. Now things happened to this delicate little sow. It didn't eat or drink. It was quiet and charming, like a bride to be married. She fell missing now. Fortunately, its front legs are too short. Otherwise, it would definitely use its front legs to support its chin and make such a hateful look. By the morning of the next day, the poor bride couldn't hold it any longer, and she was revealed as a slut. It didn't care about its decency any more and started shouting, screaming desperately, sharp yet majestic, lust turned through its body like a knife. Bloody painful. The poor little slut was tortured to death by lust, and the dat behind her was red and swollen. But other pigs have been gelded or washed, so they don't know her situation. They don't know how comfortable their friends are, but are all very indifferent. They only care about eating. They only care about sleeping. They don't care about it at all, and stay calm. It would be nice to lay down behind it and give it a little comfort, but they just don't. Duan Fang looked at the little sow because he was inexperienced and at a loss. He had to ask a camel, "What should I do?" Camel didn't panic. He let a sow scream and ignored it. It was not until the morning of the third day that Camel sent the little sow onto the boat. At this time, the little sow was almost exhausted and wanted to shout, but had no strength. Only left was its wheezing, and a pair of eyes were about to open and close. It deeply misses a sweetheart who does not exist at all. 
camel handed one phone to Yuan and said, Take it to Zhongbao Town. Fuck. Let them sleep with her and give them money. Fuck. Zhongbao Town, how open and spectacular. Since it faces Centipede Lake and a vast water surface, it has an overall perspective, giving a panoramic aspect, which is the first to catch people's attention. Its blue and massive roof is now laid out in front of Duanfang. The blue bricks and fine tiles are so meticulous, they are tightly stitched together and they are all buckled. It is these fine buckles that constitute a majestic scene, normative but uneven. Zhongbao Town is so ancient, every tile roofed house has a history of hundreds of years, so they are very old. However, although old, there is a background. They are fashioned old, sturdy, grounded, pretty, and magnificent. It is really a diverse style. There is smoke and water massiveness. Occasionally, there are several newly built houses, which are easy to identify, and they are all crimson red. Those limited, almost dilapidated crimson reds are cramped. But in the middle of a large area of blue bricks and gray tiles, they grow a little red in thousand green bushes out of nothing, which has become an embellishment. And there is a sign of victory in chaos. They abruptly have an unreasonable vitality. Zhongbao Town is actually not very big, just a small town. However, for Dunfeng, who has never seen the world, it is too big and too luxurious. It is an amazing big city, which is enough to inspire Duanfang's pride and inferiority. Speaking of pride, it is because Duanfang has lived here for two years, and is somewhat involved. Speaking of inferiority, Duanfang is not from Zhongbao Town after all. For Zhongbao Town, Duanfang has two feelings of love and hate in his heart, really contradictory. Speaking of which, it has only been a few months since Duanfang graduated from high school. In other words, it has only been a few months since Duanfang left Zhongbao Town. However, Duanfang is a countryman after all, and his goodbye is actually a farewell. Therefore, Duanfang's return is excited, disappointed, and difficult to calm and has a complexity that is difficult to express and summarize. It's like an eternity. Breeding guilt is not difficult. After paying the money, it's over. The young man at the breeding station was very quick, and Duanfang helped him to lift the little sow to the shelf. All the breeding pigs were in a commotion. The sound and smell of the sow stimulated them, and they put their front legs on the fence, stood up like horses, and howled loudly, as if saying, Let me, let me do it! A boar finally got a chance, drooling and running all the way. Due to its too much weight and too much inertia, the breeding pig did not hold up behind the little sow and propped up on the ground with its four legs, sliding a long way. The soil was swept away, leaving deep paw prints, then stopped. The old pig was in a hurry, turned around and jumped up, getting on the back of the little sow. With the help of the man at the breeding station, it found its target. He let out a long sigh. This is just a great, safe, but its stability is fake. Although its vast body is still and held there, it can be seen that it has a fire-like enthusiasm for its own work and does not slack at all. It lay on the back of the little sow, cramped its butt locks, and even tucked its tail tightly. But the end was upturned, like a sculpture. But it is not a sculpture after all. The muscles of the whole body are still alive and shaking. It's working hard. The strength of breastfeeding is used. Duan Fang was facing the boar, squatted down, lit a cigarette pot, narrowed his eyes, smoked slowly, and washed slowly. It took up to two bags of cigarettes, and the breeding pig came down. Immediately, he changed his attitude. His demeanor was very serene, and his appearance had an indomitable bearing and mind. 
He almost collapsed. His steps slackened, and he returned to the pigsty very slowly. Duan Fang put away the cigarette pot and helped lift the little sow off the shelf. The little sow lifted down was also quiet, a little shy, the kind of shyness at ease. Because of the fulfillment of her wish, she was so peaceful that almost heartless. Duan Fang drove the little sow back to the boat, where the sow lay with her chin resting on her front legs. It was a happy time. It's reminiscing. Duan Fang planned to return immediately, but after hesitating for a long time, he paddled a small sampan to the gate of Zhongbao Middle School and went ashore. Duan Fang picked a high place and stood beside a tree, looking at his campus and his classroom from a distance. This is such a familiar scene, but Duan Fang is an outsider. Everything has nothing to do with him and never will. The classroom was full of students, and Duan Fang could see the teachers on the podium, who were pointing fingers. Everything is quiet. Only the playground is an exception. There is a physical education class on the playground, and the students are playing basketball. There is some noise, and occasionally a scream or two will come over. Duan Fang's mood suddenly went bad. Where was the bad? He couldn't say anything. Duan Fang's mood was just bad. Duan Fang had planned to go back to his alma mater to have a look and have a word with his teachers. Duan Fang gave up, didn't even enter the gate, turned around and left. He was completely in a bad mood. He wanted to cry, but had no tears. Duan Fang left his alma mater and started walking around the streets. Speaking of which, Duan Fang really likes to go shopping. It doesn't matter if he goes with people or alone. Duan Fang just likes to walk on the street without any thoughts. Looking around, this kind of feeling is very good. Duan Fang was often like this when he was studying. Fortunately, Zhongbao Town is just a street, and all the shops are on this street, one by one. A few months have passed, and the size of the street have not changed at all. The shops are the same, the furniture are the same, the order is the same. The faces of the people behind the counters are the same, even the expressions are the same. Everyone stayed in their old position. This is also the characteristics of the town, stable and unchanging. People in the city are all screws, stay there and never rust. It's different for the country people, picking manure today, weeding tomorrow, and scooping mud the day after tomorrow. Different things every day. This is the gap. Duan Fang didn't know how many times he had visited this street. Every stone slab on the road was so familiar to Duan Fang, but Duan Fang's feeling was different today. The more he walked, the more he knew that he was a farmer in the countryside. Duan Fang's mood worsened as he went around. Duan Fang came to the door of the shoemaker's shop, and with a bang in his head, he suddenly remembered, isn't this Fang Cheng Fu's shoemaker's shop? Fang Cheng Fu, the man who almost became San Ya's husband, was lowering his head, putting last on a pair of elastic shoes. His bald head was facing Duan Fang, shiny with oil. As if he had received some special hint, Fang Cheng Fu raised his head, and his eyes also raised, hesitantly and slowly. Fang Cheng Fu's gaze passed Duan Fang's feet, knees, abdomen, and chest, until he saw Duan Fang's eyes. Duan Fang was about to leave, but it was too late. It's too quick to say. Duan Fang's eyes and Fang Cheng Fu's eyes were connected like this. Both sides were stunned like thunder going into their ears. Such an unexpected encounter is undefended for both parties. And it seems to have been prepared for many years. It has a biting connotation, and it is a kind of biting that outsiders never understand. The two men who almost married San Ya stared 
like this. The mouths are all so opened. Because of Sanya, they used to be so close, and also because of Sanya, they are so far away now. But the expressions of the two men were the same. Dumbfounded, just look at each other. In fact, they wanted to end it, but couldn't. They are enemies, that's for sure, but they are a bit like brothers, and a bit like brothers-in-law. Eccentric. Can tell, can think deeply. Dare not to think about it, not even mention it. Every word is superfluous, dangerous, and poignant. The two men, one old and one young, one high and one low, looked at each other like that. There were some imperceptible gasps. Finally, it was Fang Cheng Fu who averted his gaze first and lowered his head at the same time. Fang Cheng Fu lowered his head and never raised it again. Duan Fang wanted to leave, so he left immediately, but instead he was nailed to the ground, as if he was buried alive. It was buried to the knees, and both feet could not get out. Duan Fang finally put his feet out from the flagstone road. Yes, he pulled them out, moved forward. There was wind in his head. East, west, north, south wind is a whirlwind. In fact, Duan Fang didn't walk very far on the street alone and was stopped by someone. It's Zhao Jie, Duan Fang's classmate Zhao Jie. Duan Fang was in a trance and didn't see Zhao Jie, but Zhao Jie saw Duan Fang. She yelled and said, Isn't this an old classmate? The voice was so loud that it could be heard all over the street. Duan Fang was startled, but he didn't even take his mind back, so looked very stupid and stunned, which was not at all matching with Zhao Jie's enthusiasm. Zhao Jie looked at Duan Fang and said cheerfully, Why are you all like this? Duan Fang blinked, not knowing what his all like this was, just looking at Zhao Jie coldly. Zhao Jie was particularly happy, even excited, at such a meeting. But Duan Fang's demeanor reminded her that her enthusiasm seemed to be overdone. Isn't it just the meeting an old classmate? Why is it so shocking? It's not so significant. Zhao Jie immediately restrained herself and asked politely, Want to buy something? This sentence reminded Duan Fang. Only then did Duan Fang notice that Zhao Jie was not standing on the street, but in the store, behind the counter. Behind Zhao Jie is a row of mirror windows, and there are some biscuits, diamond navels, and cloud crackers stacked. Duan Fang looked at the mirror and was stunned. He stared at the mirror, stared at himself in the mirror, and did not believe that the person in the mirror was himself. The hair is quite messy and quite long, the face is oily, the beard is unshaven, and he is also holding a cigarette pot, which is tilted to his mouth, and he is thoroughly an old farmer. All like that, Duan Fang smiled reluctantly. Looking at Zhao Jie then, Zhao Jie was chubbier than a few months ago, and she looked whiter. Her face looked like a full moon, and her skin was smoother than before. That is, she is more beautiful. With that bright red blouse, she is completely a little woman in the city. A few months ago, the two of them were sitting in the same classroom at the same time. Now there is a gap. The gap widens as the width of the counter. One over here, one over there, Duan Fang said. Is good. This sentence was irrelevant, and Duan Fang himself did not know what this sentence meant. But Duan Fang heard his own tone, the kind of tone that only elders who are discouraged, overdue, and useless. Zhao Jie smiled again and said, Do you want to buy something? Duan Fang raised his foot and knocked the cigarette pot clean, trying to ease the atmosphere, and smiled. This is what you urban people eat. How can I afford it? Out of self-esteem, Duan Fang was deliberately joking when he said this. 
But it was actually a big truth. He can't afford it. He only had two dimes in his pocket, and little Sal was paired for 1.80 yuan, and the remaining two dimes were not his own. He was actually penniless. Zhao Jie paused for a while, then suddenly pulled out a piece of paper from under the counter and wrapped six diamond navels, a kind of dough snack, which is also called tiger claws in the city. Zhao Jie wrapped them up quickly, tied them with a red rope, and handed them to Duan Fang's hand. Duan Fang just said, I can't afford it. It's embarrassing to accept such a gift at such a time. He felt like he was trying to ask for something in a different way, and had no place to put his face. Duan Fang said, What are you doing? Zhao Jie said eagerly, It's rare to see an old classmate. I gave them to you. Duan Fang, a man with much self-esteem, said solemnly, No. Zhao Jie said, Take it. Duan Fang said, No. Zhao Jie said, Take it. Duan Fang blinked a few times, wanting to buy it ruthlessly. He quickly calculated in mind. The money was not enough. If Zhao Jie packed the four, he would have bought it. But now it's six. He can't. Duan Fang smiled and pushed it away with his hands and said, I really can't. Zhao Jie was a little angry and her voice became loud and said, Take it! Womanish, why push on the street? Isn't it ugly? Duan Fang looked around and there were people all around looking at them. Duan Fang finally compromised, stretched out both hands and held them over. He was so ashamed that his messy mind turned his face red and kept saying, Look what I did. It's a mess. Zhao Jie said, Take it. Next time you come up, talk to me here. Duan Fang said oh four or five times in a row, and he suddenly fell short. He fell short inch by inch. Duan Fang can see himself clearly. What did Zhao Jie say? Come here and talk next time you come up. Come up. As if he had been living in a low place, in a pigsty. But Zhao Jie was not wrong. When he went home later, wouldn't he just go down to the countryside? What Zhao Jie said was not wrong at all. Duan Fang couldn't stay still, thanked her hastily, and almost trotted back to the small sandpan, rowing hard as soon as he got on the boat. He rowed out for more than a mile in a minute. Duan Fang was out of breath and stopped. Duan Fang picked up the gift bag, looked at it carefully, and looked back at Zhong Bao Town. Zhong Bao Town was still that open and spectacular, but Duan Fang's self-esteem was stabbed by Zhao Jie. That's what country people are like. If you're not careful, your self-esteem will be stabbed, and you will bleed. Duan Fang actually knew that Zhao Jie had good intentions, but that's the saddest part. Duan Fang raised the gift bag and slammed it into the water. He just lifted it halfway but couldn't let it go. Stopped. When he opened it, a scent hit his face. Duan Fang tasted delicious, craving. One big bite, another big bite. His mouth filled up immediately choked. Tears also came out, floating in his eyes. Duan Fang thought, he should not have gone to high school, should not, shouldn't have come to town, shouldn't have come. Duan Fang stood up, swallowed the things in his mouth, swallowed the things in his eyes, and secretly swore a poisonous oath that he must be a soldier, must be a soldier, go big, Go bigger, go up, and go up again. The little sow on the other side of the boat must have smelled something good, so she raised her head and stared at Duan Fang. Duan Fang's anger finally found his target. Fuck you, if I didn't send you to the town to be fucked, why would it be like this? He put down the diamond navel and stepped over to the end of the small sandpan with a big slap on the little sloth's face. With so much of Duan Fang's strength, the little sow was slapped to scream. Fuck you! 
敦方 was furious. I want to fuck you, mother. According to the general situation, Duan Fang should come back after dark. There is no reason that he doesn't go shopping after entering the town. However, Duan Fang couldn't stay in the town. At three or four o'clock in the afternoon, Duan Fang returned to the pig farm. There was still a long distance from the hut, and Duan Fang unexpectedly found that the door of the hut was tightly closed. This was strange. The door of the hut had never closed, and it was often not closed when sleeping at night. Not to mention it was a bright day. Duan Fang crept up and walked to the door gently, listening to it. There was a subtle and sneaky voice inside. He worried. Duan Fang leaned his head against the door panel and looked in through the door frame. It was pitch black in the hut, and nothing could be seen. However, after a while, Duan Fang's eyes got used to it. As soon as he got used to it, Duan Fang was scared to death. Camel was half naked. His back was hunched, and he was kneeling on the ground. In front of him was a smaller sow. Camel gripped the little sow's hind legs tightly, pressed his crotch against the little black pig's ass, opened his mouth wide, and pushed painfully, forcefully, and rhythmically into the little sow's body. Duan Fang understood all of a sudden and rapidly remembered the situation at the breeding station. Duan Fang dared not to exhale. He was afraid. It could be said his soul was scattered. Duan Fang lay on the ground, daring not to make a slight movement, and crawled away. While crawling and turning back, he can't leave any traces. Don't let Camel know. Leave nothing to let Camel know. If Camel finds out, he might die. Duan Fang returned to the small sampan, shouted loudly, and yelled at the little sow, making the illusion that he just landed. After everything was done, Duan Fang rode on the railing of the pigsty and lit the cigarette pot. After a while, Camel came, with a tired face and the corners of his eyes drooping down. Camel groaned and asked, "You're back." Duan Fang didn't want to look into Camel's eyes again and said, "I'm back." Camel said, "Why don't you play in the town?" Duan Fang sighed and said, "I've been playing for two years. Not much fun." Is it made it? Yes. Duan Fang said this, looked back at the little sow in the pigsty, and thought to himself, "This little bride also has something to do with Camel." Thinking of this, Duan Fang felt his heart twist, as if someone was holding it in his hand and rubbing it hard. Duan Fang remembered Camel saying, "Take pigs as people." Now it looks like he meant it. Just got it the other way around. Instead of treating pigs as people, he treated himself as a pig. Camel is not a person, not really human. And he stays here. Sooner or later, will not be human either. Duan Fang's heart suddenly filled with sadness, which was quite brutal and domineering. He can't help himself. Duan Fang leaned and lay on the fence, closed his eyes, and said, "I'm tired after rowing the boat all day." Camel said. Why don't you go back to the shed to rest for a while? Duan Fang didn't answer. Just lay there. The two legs were hanging on both sides of the wall, looking very strange. He looked like nothing, as if asleep.